Okay, finally stage four, and what we're talking about here is carburetor selection for a heated versus an unheated intake manifold. All right, so what you see here is you've got two uh, square bore Holly designed carburetors, and one of them is appropriate for heated intake, and one of them is appropriated for an unhe appropriate for an unheated intake. And uh, the problem is. If you use, if you just go in the parts store and say, I want the best carburetor, right? Again, you kind of lost sight of the idea of what's appropriate for the application, right? The best doesn't mean the best for everything, right? It means the best for a certain situation, okay? So what I have here is, um, it is a mechanical secondary um, Holly carburetor. Uh, it's not one of the cheaper models. Um, it's a double pumper. But what I want you to specifically pay attention to are the boosters, right? Now, these amplify the signal, right? See my finger? That's called a straight leg booster. And in this case, it's on the primary and the secondary, okay? Now, the boosters are the primary means that the carburetor dispenses fuel into the engine. Um, you've got the idle circuit where you're just sitting there and park. Um, you've got the accelerator pump circuit. Um, when you, you know, hit the throttle and it'll give you an extra shot of gasoline, right? But most of your fuel is going to come out of these boosters, which is by signal. That is, the pistons going down in the bore are going to draw the fuel into the airstream from that, okay? Now, these straight leg boosters, the way they put out fuel is essentially through um, what I believe is a single orifice and big blobs of fuel, relatively big, you know, drops of fuel, Okay. Now, that's appropriate for a heated intake because, like we said, heated intakes with that big exhaust gas passage underneath them, they vaporize fuel. So what that heat is going to do is it's going to take those big blobs of fuel and it's going to break it down into smaller ones and it's going to turn it into vapor. Okay. So that size of fuel droplet is appropriate for the heat. If, however, you're going to do... Uh, run an unheated intake, right? And by the way, the manufacturers nowadays are going more and more to unheated intakes. But even if you've got an old school Edelbrock or Wyand or Holly intake manifold, uh, performer type manifold, this is actually a performer RPM, they still come with that exhaust gas passage under the center, okay? Right up until the 21st century, most of them did. Nowadays, you got these manufacturers going to the air gap design, which is what this is. It's a Chinese version, but they've eliminated the passage entirely, okay? You Pontiac guys talking about Pontiac cylinder heads probably know that the air gap design is not new and that it goes all the way back to the 50s at least. Someone else may have invented it. I'm not sure Pontiac invented it, and everybody else seems to be jumping on the bandwagon here in the 21st century. Um, small block Chevrolet air gap manifolds like this one cost more money because they make more power. They make more power because they're not heated. That's the reason, okay? But uh, I got off on a tangent here. Um, what I was talking about is if you're using the unheated intake then, whether it be a aftermarket design like we just saw or uh, uh, one you make yourself, like we've been talking about. What you want is a different kind of carburetor, okay? This carburetor has what's called an annular booster, right? A-N-N-U-L-A-R, annular booster, okay? I want you to see the difference between those boosters and the straight leg ones of the other carburetor that we just saw. The annular boosters are quite a bit larger. That's the first thing you notice and they don't have a restriction in the center, okay? <clears throat> now this booster is an entirely different kind of design. It gives you more signal. The main difference is this. This booster acts more like a shower head, I guess you would call it, right? Which dispenses a lot of tiny atomized drops of fuel. Um, I'm not sure you can see, but there are a lot of I think there are eight small annuluses in it, right? There are, there are eight small holes that, that dispense fuel into the engine. 
and it's not in big blobs it's in tiny small droplets now if you put that carburetor on a heated intake manifold right and it's got them in the primaries too what you're going to get is the fuel immediately vaporizing right because the droplets are so small the heat will just turn them into gas right so that's not what you want on a heated intake manifold it's actually going to give you less volumetric efficiency and less power and perhaps that's one of the reasons why this style of carburetor is not popular anymore holly doesn't make it anymore they they sold the rights to manufacture it to summit okay so for you guys who are just going in and getting into the hobby and are going to buy a carburetor which is usually the way you stick your foot in the door of, of engine modifications and you buy one of these off the shelf or something like it with a vacuum secondary with straight leg boosters and stick it on an unmodified heated intake manifold well that's what the carburetor manufacturer knows that you're going to do and so this is appropriate for that okay but if you get into the next you know level of modifications with unheated intake manifolds this is what you want right because it's appropriate for that application um, you're gonna not have the heat in the intake manifold and so your fine homogenized drops your your good air fuel mixture which is liquid right not gas as in the case here is going to pack more of that energy to burn into the cylinders with this kind of carburetor okay now that's something that I don't hear discussed a lot you know a lot of guys know about the heated versus unheated intake manifold it was common knowledge 50 years ago that the first thing you would do when you bought a fast street car right off the factory showroom floor in a lot of cases is that you would get rid of that under carburetor heat and this was in the days even before EGR valves um, when cars had manual chokes you would get rid of that heat and nowadays a lot of that knowledge seems to be lost but in those days you didn't have these kind of boosters you didn't have these kind of carburetors and so technology has come forward and this stuff is available to us I mean for you guys who are into fuel injection and computer controlled cars obviously this seems hopelessly archaic to you right but um, there is a lot to be said to specking out the parts combination we hear about that all the time we hear about picking the right camshaft for the application the, re the, the right rear end gear ratio but you don't hear too much about this people just want the best right and again the best is not always universal okay thanks guys